Hello and welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Kristen and I forgot to do an intro for this video. So uh, yeah, today we're going to be doing a what's for dinner video and we're going to start off with a delicious and easy chicken pot pie. For tonight's dinner, we're going to be having a super easy chicken and a biscuit pot pie dish. Sorry, my cat is bumping the tripod and is throwing me off. Would you stop? Not helping, sir. So, chicken and a biscuit pot pie, super easy to do. We're going to have it for lunch today, leftovers for dinner tonight. Um, so let's go ahead and get on into it. The first thing that I did was I took three boneless, skinless chicken breasts and I baked them in my oven for 40 minutes. You want to cook your chicken until it reaches an internal temperature of 165 degrees. If you don't have a kitchen thermometer, you just want to cook it until it's completely uh, white inside. There's no more pink and make sure all the juices coming out are clear. So I'm going to go ahead and take mine and start cutting it up. You can, of course, use a knife and a cutting board if you want to. But I always feel like cutting my meat with scissors, especially when I'm just needing rough chunks of meat. It doesn't need to look any in particular way. I feel like this is just such an easier way to do it. Just hack it all up real quick. So I did season my chicken with a little bit of garlic and pepper seasoning. There's salt in this as well. You can get the spice from Dollar Tree. It's got all three seasonings in it, garlic, pepper, and salt. It's like a three-in-one, which is fantastic. And then I also put some parsley on top. Now that I've got all of my chicken chunked up into bite-sized pieces, we're ready to move on to the next step. I do want to throw out though, if you would rather use uh, chicken thighs, feel free. If you got a rotisserie chicken on hand that you need to shut up, you can use that. Or even canned chicken will do the same thing. To this, we're going to add one bag of frozen mixed vegetables. I get mine from Walmart for right about a dollar, so super cheap. To this mixture, we're going to need two cans of cream of chicken soup. If you'd rather sub it out for cream of mushroom, feel free, you can do that as well. Cream of whatever you choose to use. Even cream of potato would probably work, even though there's nothing else potato in here, but it would probably do the same thing. Don't shy away from dented cans either. I saved some money and got mine for 34 cents. <laughs> I always advocate to use what you have on hand and save money where you can. To this, we're going to add a splash of milk. That's something you can easily eyeball. The point of that is to kind of uh, water down the condensed soup a little bit. To this, we're going to add our spices. So I've got a little bit of paprika. And again, this is something I just eyeball for flavor. What I found when it comes to eyeballing spices a lot of the times is if you have a nice layer across the top of whatever you're making, you're probably pretty good. So paprika, I'm gonna go a little light-handed on because I do enjoy it, but I don't want like a ton of it. I don't want this to be like a spicy dish. Just a little, little something in there, you know? So that was our garlic, pepper, salt. And I got some minced onions. If you would like to use a raw onion and chop it up and throw it in, by all means, I would say half of an onion would probably do you. I don't like big bites of onion even when they're cooked. So I like the minced onion. It gives me great onion flavor, but it's so tiny that I don't have to crunch on it. And we're also gonna do some parsley flakes and some basil. Rosemary and thyme are also fantastic in a pot pie if you have them on hand. I'm out, so I won't be using them, but if you want to, feel free. Now we're just going to take it all and mix it together. Okay, and then to a baking pan, whatever size you feel like using, this one is a, this one is a 9 by 13. We're just going to give it a good coating, some nonstick spray, and then layer are filling inside. Okay, 
And if you use a rubber spatula, it'll help you really get just about everything out. And we just push it all around, make sure it's all evenly put into the pan. Okay guys, we are getting to the end of it. Now we're just gonna take our can of pre-made biscuit dough. There's that satisfying pop. So we're just gonna layer this on the top. Now of course, if you want to make homemade biscuit dough um, or batter even, you just either spoon it right on top. You don't even gotta make perfect biscuit shapes. You just spoon it in like a drop biscuit. Or you could go all the way and actually make it look like this. Whatever you prefer. Um, I'm looking for an easy dish. So I'm just using the pre-made biscuits. Delicious and simple. Okay, I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees. I'm gonna pop this in for 20 minutes and then we should be ready to have lunch. Okay guys, fresh out of the oven, there's our delicious and easy chicken and a biscuit pot pie. I do believe it could probably go another five minutes, but I know my husband likes biscuits and such when they're a little doughy on the inside. So I'm pulling mine out now right at the 20 minute mark, but everything's fully cooked, bubbling and hot, ready to go. So tonight we are going to be having chicken roadkill, if that's what you want to call it. I don't click out just yet. <laughs> I'm not gonna send you out to find some dead bird in the yard, okay? Um, if you guys go to Texas Roadhouse, you know they have a meal that's called roadkill. I think it's like a chuck steak or something like that. Um, kind of like a hamburger steak, more or less. And it's got onions and mushrooms and mozzarella cheese all on top. It's an ooey gooey mess and it's absolutely delicious and we love it. We make that at home, but with chicken because ground beef and hamburger and steaks are just super expensive and ch chicken's getting expensive too, but we've been doing this a lot for the last couple of years with chicken breast and it's delicious. So I thought I'd show you guys how we make this. It's one of our favorite meals. It's very easy. Um, it does take a little bit of time because the chicken takes almost an hour in the oven to cook, but you don't got a whole lot to do in that hour. So let's get the chicken ready and in the oven and then we'll start making our sides in a little bit. Okay, on average, like one good piece of chicken per person should be more than enough. Um, I had three left in a bag, so I thought we're just gonna finish it off and do all three. So I went ahead and lined my pan with some aluminum foil, and I did a little bit of nonstick spray, and I'm gonna spray the tops of the chicken with that as well, because it kind of helps act as an adhesive and keep your spices stuck to your chicken. So I'm gonna go in with the Weber Steak and Chop Seasoning. Use whatever steak seasoning that is your favorite. Use your favorite. Everybody in my house is sick. You can hear my kids and they're coughing right now. <laughs> so a nice healthy dose of that on top. And then we're gonna give it all a nice little flip. Make sure you're rinsing your hands in between touching your chicken. Rinse them, wash them, get that stuff off because you don't wanna touch your chicken and then touch other things cross-contamination will get you sick. So, another spritz of that on there and some more spices. Okay, this is ready to go into the oven at 375 degrees for 20 minutes. And I'll see you guys back when it's ready to flip. Okay, for our sides this evening, in this pot back here, I have some broccoli, it was frozen. So right now we're just working on that kind of falling out and cooking. And then in this pot, I have a boxed pasta dish. It's the tortellini and pesto. You can get these over at Aldi's. They're really yummy. So at the 20 minute mark, I did flip my chicken and I put it back in for another 20 minutes. And while these are cooking, we're gonna start working on our mushrooms, which is gonna top our chicken. So you can use fresh mushrooms if you want to. I always find that fresh mushrooms is something that you have to use like the day you buy it or the day after. They don't keep long term. So I always use canned mushrooms almost always unless I just have it planned to work out to use the mushrooms right away you get what I'm saying so uh, just drain off your mushrooms these are little mushroom slices they work just as well fresh will taste better but you know like I said unless you're just planning this around a grocery trip and you're gonna cook it when you get home just use what you have on hand okay so let's say about a medium high heat and then we're going to do one one uh, tablespoon of butter I just use a regular regular size spoon there drop that on in 
and then to the mushrooms now I'm going to add some minced onion if you want it cut up fresh onion by all means do that I'm not a big fan of big chunks of onion in my food so I find just using minced dehydrated onion it'll rehydrate itself but it's really finely minced um, it does the trick for me it gives me all the onion flavor I need but again if you want to throw in like some actual onion and chop it up uh, like fresh onion feel free and then back in with our steak seasoning again use whatever you have on hand use whatever your favorite steak seasoning is we're just gonna do that and all we're working on doing here is sauteing our mushrooms so give them all a nice little toss around here I don't know. I'm, I'm sure you're looking at it over here. Okay, we got some pancake batter from this morning still stuck to the stove. You know what? If you want to spend all day long cleaning your kitchen, good on you. It ain't for me, okay? I'll give my kitchen a good clean before bed. Sometimes it happens the next morning. So we'll get that after dinner's cooked. Don't you worry about it. It's my problem, not yours. <laughs> so we're just going to put a lid on all this and let that sit and simmer for a little bit. Okay, my broccoli back here has finished cooking. So I'm gonna take half a brick of cream cheese. We're just gonna throw that in and let it start melting. And then we're also gonna add some salt and pepper in here with it as well. So that's a, a really, really simple dish. And we're just gonna let everything come together back here. Okay, back to my mushrooms here. They are pretty much done. Immense, we're gonna turn the heat off on that. There you go. The, uh, minced onion has rehydrated itself it's all come together with great flavor so we're just going to turn the heat off and keep the uh the little lid on that so that it keeps all the heat in while our chicken finishes cooking and my pasta back here it's got a little ways to go so i'm just going to keep an eye back here on my broccoli and make sure my cream cheese gets melted in and i'll see you guys when it's ready to plate okay and there's our dinner now that we have it plated um, the chicken, I did put a slice of Gouda cheese on top of each of the chicken breasts, giving my husband the two smaller ones because they're combined bigger than the big one. <laughs> and anyways, slice of Gouda cheese on top, popped them back in the oven so it could get all melty, and we've topped it with the mushrooms, and yeah, everything's looking really good, and it's really tasty to use steak sauce with our chicken. So there we have it, meal number one complete. Let's move on to meal number two. So for lunch today, we're gonna do up some simple sausage and cheese omelets. This is obviously great for breakfast, lunch, dinner. Uh, it's just a simple meal. So in each bowl here for my omelets, I've got uh, three eggs per, so I'm making two different omelets here. Um, so I'm just gonna add in some salt and some pepper. And we're just gonna beat this like scrambled eggs. So I like to add a splash of milk. I think it helps make things fluffy. Just a little bit. Okay, and then we're just gonna, I'll like use a fork and use a whisk if you want. We're just gonna beat everything together. It's nice and fluffy. And while I'm doing this, I do have a pan over on my stove heating up. And it's got a little bit of non stick cooking spray inside. So I'll show you guys how to do one egg or one omelet. So we get it all nice and fluffy, well combined. We want it to start kind of getting a little frothy on the top. That's really what we're looking for. Um, it's the same way when I do my scrambled eggs. I beat it until it starts looking a little frothy. A little, little bubbly there. Now let's go pour it on the stove. Okay, so omelets is actually a new thing. I've mastered. It's come with a lot of trial and error. <laughs> So I found my favorite kind of pan for this, nice round one. I'm gonna make sure everything kind of evenly coats the pan. This one might not turn out, it may have gotten the pan too hot and it's bubbling up in a way I don't want it to. So we'll see. Like I said, I've, I've newly mastered the omelet. But you just want it to finally coat the bottom of the pan. So if, if your stove is anything like mine, it might tilt a little bit. So I'm just kind of taking my, my thing and just kind of straightening out my pan a little bit so it gets a nice even coating. Otherwise it wants to pool on one side. And we want it to just kind of start to cook up. So you can kind of tell at the bottom that it's starting to get nice and fluffy and cooked. 
but we have this layer right on top here that is still quite liquidy. So I just kind of like to push that around to try to help get it to cook a little more quickly. But you don't want to be scrambling it. You don't want to be in there shushing it around to make scrambled eggs. You're just trying to push this liquidy layer around a little bit. And I'm going to turn my temperature down a little so we don't overcook anything. You just want a nice even layer of cooked eggs <laughs> in your pan. Okay, now that I've got everything well and cooked, it's not really sliding around my pan anymore. It's all staying in one spot. We can add our filling. So I've got one uh, smoked sausage. You guys have seen them in throughout the rest of this video. So I just took one of them, finally chopped it, and we're gonna add about half of it here to this omelet and save the other half for my other omelet. There we go. And then I'm gonna use some mozzarella cheese because it's what I have on hand. Use whatever cheese you like, whatever cheese you have. A sharp cheddar would be really nice. Nice fine layer of cheese. Turn off my stove. Put a plate back here. I like to have a plate on hand so that I can quickly transfer it and hopefully not make a mess. So right now I'm just kind of scraping along the sides here. I'm sorry if anyone out there knows how to make an omelet. This is probably information you don't need. Um, but it took me a long time to figure out how to make an omelet, so I thought somebody else out there might need a little help. So now we've got it to where I can get my uh, spatula under here, so I'm just going to fold it in half. I don't have the prettiest folds, but that's okay. And transfer it to a plate. See, I already made a mess. I just flopped it all across. So. But now that it's all folded there, the uh, cheese can start to melt. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my other one and I'll show you guys what I serve it with. And as our side with our meal today, I just sliced up an apple for each of us and that is our lunch. For dinner tonight, we're gonna to be doing up a cheesy potato soup. So what we're gonna be needing to do is get some potatoes. I'm starting off with seven potatoes. Uh, we'll see, I might need more. Uh, carrots that I'm also gonna chop up and some smoked sausage. So I just like to get these ones there um, from Bar S and get them at Walmart and get a whole pack for like under $5. So we're just gonna chop pop these all up and you're gonna put them in your pot. Now you could always uh, peel your potatoes if you want to, but the skins never bothered me anyways. <laughs> so to this, we're gonna add two cups of chicken broth. You could also use vegetable broth. And then we're going to add in our spices. So we're going to start off with some minced onion. And when it comes to soups, I feel like everything's to taste. I always feel like a nice layering of seasoning across the top is normally enough for whatever you're making. So that's just kind of how I do it. But Then I'm going to do some uh, granulated garlic. some parsley, and of course, the more you cook, the more you learn what flavors you like and all of that. And so with parsley, I like it, but I don't want a ton of it. So and that's just personal preference. And then I'm going to add in some steak seasoning. So a lot of times when I watch these what's for dinner videos, I see people add a lot of salt and pepper to dishes that then they add other spices that also have a lot of salt and pepper and hey i'm all for pepper i may still add some extra here but when it comes to salt i feel like salt food is so salty anyways right and so we already have smoked sausage in here that has salt in it this has salt in it why i mean why do i need to keep adding more salt that's my opinion so if you want to add more salt feel free i don't really see a need to do so we're also going to add cheese to this later on. That's going to have salt in it. I feel like salt can kind of overpower a dish. Um, and maybe that's just me being a little salt shy. I've had uh, grandparents and my dad as well have had heart attacks. Um, my grandpa's was from too much sodium. And my dad eats a lot of salt too. So I tried to like 
go a little easier on the salt. I still salt my food, but I don't add extra salt if I don't see a reason to. So as example, there's salt in this. I don't see a reason to add extra, but that's personal preference. Add salt if you want to. And let this be a lesson to you. Keep your lids on because this went clumpy. <laughs> But it'll work perfectly in a soup because it'll kind of dissolve. So it won't matter if it's got some chunks in it. Then I'm going to add in uh, two cups water. Give it all a stir. And if you guys have celery salt or celery you'd like to add to this, it's a great addition to the dish. I am just out. It's not going to hurt it if you don't have the celery, but it does add some nice flavor. Okay, now we're going to put this in the slow cooker on slow for eight hours. Or I should say on low for eight hours. Okay, our potato soup is almost ready to go. It smells amazing. So to our crock pot, we're going to add in two cups of cheese, whatever you like to use. I have mild cheddar, a sharp cheddar would be excellent. But I've also done this with like Colby Jack cheese or mozzarella cheese or even Velveeta is really good. So use what you have on hand. Like I said, I've got two cups of mild cheddar. One can, which is like one cup of evaporated milk. You could also use um, heavy whipping cream. It's kind of like the same thing. Or if you want to get a little more fancy with it, I don't know if you want to call it fancy, but complicated, um, you can make a roux with either like milk and um, cornstarch, or you could take like a tablespoon or two, like two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of flour, cook them in a stove together, <laughs> then add like a cup of milk, whisking until all the uh, flour bits are dissolved, and then add it in here. And it would give you the thickening effect as well. That one's just a little more time effective, but definitely works if you don't have creamer or evaporated milk on hand. We just wanna work this cheese down in there until it melts. And just because I happen to have a can of um, condensed creamy potato soup on hand, I'm gonna add it into the pot as well because I think this is also gonna help thicken and make my soup creamy. Plus, I don't know when I would ever use this again. So this is just a little extra thing on my part to use up some stuff I have in the kitchen. You do not need to add this if you don't have it. Don't feel obligated at all. I've actually never done this before, so hopefully it tastes good. Um, like I said, I, d I don't know when I would ever use this. I bought this on accident trying to buy cream of chicken, so I think it's a good use for it. Okay, I'm just gonna sit over here and keep stirring until all of my cheese is melted. And so I will see you guys at the counter once I have everything plated. I'm gonna top my soup with a little extra cheese. And then we also have some saltine crackers to put on top as well. Okay, that is it for this what's for dinner video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you're new, I hope you decide to take the time to check out my channel, see if there's anything else you'd like to watch. Maybe hit subscribe, we can be internet friends. Come connect with me in the comments down below. I love chatting with you guys. Let me know what you think of these recipes and if you try any of them. And yeah, give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I just appreciate the engagement. I hope to catch you guys in my next video.